Hello, everyone. Suwanish Chuck here to continue the lessons from uh, the workbook of A Course in Miracles. And today we are on lesson 131. And the lesson is, no one can fail who seeks to reach the truth. It says failure is about, is all about you while you seek for goals that cannot be achieved. You look for permanence in the impermanent, for love where there is none, for safety in the midst of danger, immortality within the darkness of a dream of death. I'm going to read that again. In the midst of danger, immortality with the darkness of the dream of death. Who could succeed where contradiction is the setting of his searching and the place to which he comes to find stability? This references all of the ego based thought system. And let's remember, the ego is about seek and do not find. And this lesson is about reaching the truth of who you are. You got to make a little adjustment here. There we go. Okay. Goals that are meaningless are not attained. There is no way to reach them for the means by which you strive for them are meaningless as they are. Who can use such senseless means and hope through them to gain anything? Where can they lead? And what could they achieve that offers any hope of being real? Pursuit of the imagined leads to death because it is the search for nothingness. And while you seek for life, you ask for death. You look for safety and security. While in your heart, you pray for danger and protection for the little dream that you made. Again, this is all from the ego thought system, which is all based in fear. And it's, it's meaningless. Fear is meaningless. And we put all the meaning to it. We put all our energy into the fear. And, and, and again, it, it, it's searching for nothingness. God is limitless. God is everything. And, you know, as we continue to, to entertain the ego thought system, the programming, the conditioning that we have all based in fear, we will continue to experience nothingness. We might in our mind think it's something, but when we truly go within, is it our truth? Is it our soul's passion? So it says, yet searching is inevitable here. For this you came, and you will surely do the thing you came for. But the world cannot dictate the goal for which you search unless you give it power to do so. What are you giving your power to? Otherwise, you are still free to choose a goal that lies beyond the world and every worldly, worldly thought and one that comes to you from an idea relinquished yet remembered, old yet new, an echo of heritage forgot, yet holding everything you can really want. And remember two lessons back, Beyond this world, there is a world I want. 
So it says, otherwise you're still free to choose a goal that lies beyond the world and every worldly thought. So be glad that search you must. Be glad as well to learn you search for heaven and must find the goal you really want. Our search for heaven is our search for truth, our search for peace, our search for joy, our search for happiness, our search for abundance. That's all heaven. Again, that's our divine inheritance, where we, which we still do not totally believe in because in fact, if we did, that would, would be our experience moment to moment. God's son cannot seek vainly Though he try to force delay, deceive himself and think that it is hell he seeks. When he is wrong, he finds correction. When he wanders off, he is led back to his appointed tasks. So we have the Holy Spirit. As we, you know, practice the course, the Holy Spirit is our bridge from the ego, ego thought system to the thoughts of God. From fear-based thinking and experience to God, to love. And in God is where our security and our safety is, but we look for it in the world. And this lesson is telling us, as long as we are searching for the truth, we will not fail. He says, no one remains in hell, for no one can abandon his creator nor affect his perfect, timeless, and unchanging love. God is always with us. All God is always within us. God is part of our mind. And he says again, no one remains in hell, for no one can abandon his creator nor affect his perfect, timeless, and unchanging love. You will find heaven. Everything you seek but this will fall away. Yet not because it has been taken from you. It is because It will go because you do not want it. The Course says, what do you want? a question to answer for yourself. You will reach the goal you really want as certainly as God created you in sinlessness. We only believe in, in, in that we're sinful because we still yet have not believed that we are innocent and holy as God created us. It said, why wait for heaven? It is here today. Time is the great illusion. It is past or in the future. That's time. Time is an illusion. In God's world, is timeless. It says, yet, you know, again, time is a great illusion. It is past or it is in, in the future. Yet, this cannot be. If it is where God's, God wills his son to be, how could the will of God be in the past or yet to happen? What he wills is now without a past and wholly futureless. All there is is now, now and now. That's all there is, is now. It's timeless to say that to yourself and really be with that. There's only now. You know, it, it's, it's being present in God. It's the presence. And, and that's, you know, what we're challenged with as we, you know, continue to, to live in the ego thought system. At any moment, we have the opportunity to be present, to be in the presence of God. 
Again, what he wills is now without a past and wholly futureless. It is as far removed from time as is a tiny candle from a distant star or what you choose from what you really want. Remember again, I'm gonna say it. It is right here, right now for us to remember. I am as God created me. Heaven remains your one alternative to this strange world you made in all its ways, its shifting patterns and uncertain goals, its painful pleasures and its tragic joys, tragic joys. God made no contradictions. What denies its own existence and attacks itself is not of God, of, of, God, of him. He did not make two minds. There is just one mind of God. And all is in that mind. Again, he did not make two minds. With heaven as the glad effect of one and earth, the other sorry outcome, which is heaven's opposite in every way. See, as we still are in the dualistic world, in the dualistic thought system, we believe there are two minds. There's only one mind that is real. All the rest is what we make up. You know, so I heard something this morning because, um, you know, I am being conscious of the conversations I have in my mind about aging. Because again, we've been socialized, programmed, conditioned by the world to believe that we decline, we age, and we die. The body is a cause not an effect. And the truth is we're not a body. And that may be a very difficult concept. It's something I work on. And, you know, I'll be very honest. Oh, I'm not even gonna say my age. That, that you know, we are given this body as a means of communication. And we have developed a belief in sickness on a collective consciousness. And the more and more that I give up, do my, my own work around releasing the belief in sickness. And I've, and I've had my work to do around that because I'm a retired nurse. That again, that we've set up all of this about suffering, pain, and sickness, because in God's world, there is none. I'll leave it at that. Every part of our body is meant to be healed or healing or healthy. Maybe that's the word to be healthy and functional. There's everything within it. But on a collective consciousness, we still have not believed that. That's why I do this work. As I heal, you heal. So that's what I wanted to share today. So where did I leave off here? So it said, heaven remains your alternative to this strange world you made and all its ways. It's shifting, uh, shifting patterns and uncertain goals. It's painful pleasures and it's tragic joys. God made no contradiction. What denies its own existence and attacks itself is not of him. Again, he did not make two minds with heaven as the glad effect of one and the earth, the other, others, sorry, outcome, which is heaven's opposite in every way. I did read that again, and I, I believe that was so because it was supposed to be read again. So I'll go on. Say God does not suffer conflict nor is, is his creation split in two, his creation. 
How could it be his son could be in hell when God himself established him in heaven? Could he lose what the eternal will has given him to be his home forever? Let us not try longer to impose an alien will upon God's single purpose. He is here because he wills to be. And what he wills is present now, beyond the reach of time. And, and I got a note here as well with regards to this, um, you know, healing, or you know, we have we're suffering or we're in pain. You know, it's healing does not take time unless unless we choose to believe in it. Healing does not take time unless we choose to believe in it. Today, we will not choose a paradox in place of truth. How could the son of God make time to take away the will of God? He thus denies himself and contradicts what has no opposite. He thinks he made a hell opposing heaven and believes that he abides in what does not exist. Well, heaven is the place he cannot find. While we're, we are dwelling and in suffering and pain and dwelling in the ego thought system, again, that's the block. That's the blindness to heaven. Because heaven always exists or is always there. God is always with us. God goes with us wherever we go. We just get totally distracted by the idols of this world. And in dwelling there, we forget who we are. And we continue to do this work so that we be more and more conscious of when we forget so that we, re we remember. And I'm reminded in a moment that as we continue to do this work, the unconscious guilt, this is what the course is, uh, as you really practice it, you know, the course is, um, this unconscious guilt will come up to be released. You know, it's not about staying in our heads with this course. It's not about learning the theory. And thinking because we learned it, that we know something. It's about, this course is about the practical experience. The practical experience of the principles. The practical experience of practicing the course. The lessons. And love being the motivator. That's my motivator. I want only God. I want only love. God is love. So today, we'll not choose a paradox in place of truth. How could the son of God make time to take away the will of God? He thus denies himself and contradicts what has no opposite. And again, he thinks he made hell opposing heaven and believes that he abides in what does not exist. Well, heaven is the place he cannot find. I just read that again. We need this repetition to, you know, really um, hear this over and over again to be able to release what we need to release to the Holy Spirit. So it says, leave foolish thoughts like these behind today and turn your mind to true ideas instead. No one can fail who seeks to reach the truth. And it is truth we seek to reach today, right now. We will devote 10 minutes to this goal three times today. That's 30 minutes out of our day, broken up into 10 minutes each time. And we will ask to see the rising of the real world to replace the foolish images, images that we hold dear with true ideas arising in the place of thoughts that have no meaning, 
no effect and neither source nor substance in the truth. This we acknowledge as we start upon our practice periods, begin with this. I ask to see a different world and think a different kind of thought from those I made. The world I seek, I did not make alone. The thoughts I want to think are not my own. For several minutes, watch your mind and see. Although your eyes are closed, the senseless world you think is real. Review the thoughts as well, which are compatible with such a world and what you think are true. Then let them go and sink, sink below them to the holy place where they can enter not. It's tapping in to your holiness, which is ever present, only blocked by these thoughts that we believe we are not innocent and holy and how that shows up in our thoughts. There is a door beneath them in your mind, which could not completely lock to hide what lies beyond. Seek for the, that door and find it. But before you try to open it, remind yourself no one can fail who seeks to reach the truth. And it is this request you make today. Nothing but this has any meaning now. No other goal is valued now nor sought. Nothing before this door you really want and only what lies past it do you seek. Open the door to your heart. Open the door to love. Open the door to God today. Put out your hand and see how easily the door swings open with your one intent, your one intent to go beyond it. You only need the intention. Angels believe angels light the way so that all darkness vanishes and you are standing in a light so bright and clear that you can understand all things you see. A tiny moment of surprise, perhaps, will make you pause before you realize the world you see before you in the light reflects the truth you knew and did not quite forget in wandering away in dreams. You cannot fail today. There walks with you the spirit heaven sent you that you might approach this door someday and through his aid slip effortlessly, effortlessly past it to the light. Today, that day has come. Today, God seeks his ancient promise to his holy son, as does his son remember his to him. This is a day of gladness. For we come to the appointed time and place where you will find the goal of all your searching here and all the seeking of the world, which end together as you pass beyond the door. Remember often that today should be a time of special gladness and refrain from dismal thoughts and meaningless laments. Salvation time has come today is set by heaven itself to be a time of grace for you and the world if you forget this happy fact remind yourself with this today i seek and find all that i want my single purpose offers it to me no one can fail 
who seeks to reach the truth. You know, as you reflect on this lesson, and you know, as you take your 10 minutes three times a day, three times throughout the day, you know, you might want to uh, ask yourself the question, what I have, what have I replaced God with? What have I replaced God with? When all that is possible for us is heaven and our divine inheritance of peace, love, joy, and happiness, abundance. That's what's possible. Thank you for being uh, here with me today. And um, I always appreciate any and all of you who are viewing these videos as I continue to, to build this community here and follow through on, on my commitment to complete these uh, 365 videos. So as we uh, conclude today, as always, it's much appreciated if you like, push the like button, make a comment, as I said before, just put a heart there, put a thumbs up. It's all below here, below the YouTube video. It shows you where to, to like, where to comment, and where to share. Share this video out. There are, look, there are people looking for this. They may not know it's a form of A Course in Miracles, but they are looking for this. They are searching for this and you're sharing it can make that possible for them. All right, what's one more? There's one more, all right. Please, if you haven't already subscribed, please do so. And for those of you who have, um, thank you. And um, always I appreciate any donations. And again, if you go below the video here into the description, and there's a place there to click on more. When you click on more, It'll present more information and it'll give you um, the directions on, as to how to donate, where to donate. And also it'll give you some information on other references to help to support you in, in the course. So, all right, till the next video, which will be for lesson 132, I believe. Correct, 132. Until then, much love from my heart. Bye for now.